our users can now enter some text into the input and then click the add button. But when they do that, nothing actually happens. We need to make sure that we pull the text value out of the input and then send it off to Firebase to be saved. We'll do this by just adding another event handler, just like the ones we're used to, to our button. So inside of header.jsx, I'm gonna do a little bit of indentation work on button and then we'll add our event handler. We'll say on click, run the function this.handleClick. And at the bottom of our component, we'll implement handle click. Cool. Let's make sure this is working by just console logging I was clicked. Our browser will update, and then we can enter some text and click add, and sure enough, there's our event handler. Terrific. So I'm, we're going to put a comment in here, and we're just going to say, send value of text input to Firebase. Because that's what we want to have happen in here, right? We want to read the value of the input and send it off to Firebase. Well, working with Forms in React is a pretty interesting experience, and we won't quite dive down the whole rabbit hole of why we're going to, about to do what we're going to do, but we will talk about what's going to be happening in great detail. In a later section, we'll do a little bit more deeper discussion about why we're having to do what we're about to do. And I hope that didn't uh, make anybody kind of anxious. This won't be too bad or too painful. The way that we work with forms uh, in React is by defining the form element that we want to work with. In this case, it's the input, right? In React, we refer to our form elements as being either a controlled or uncontrolled form element. When we have a controlled form element, all that really means is that the value of the input, so the value of whatever text we're entering, is directly tied to this dot state. The way we do that, let's do some indentation here really quick, is we just say value equals this dot state and then some property. In this case, we'll just say it's text. So we're now working with this kind of mystery property here, this this.state.text. Before we go any farther, let's go ahead and just default that. Uh, we'll say at the top, we'll say get initial state, and we'll set the initial value of text to be just an empty string. Cool. So the way that we read this, whenever this component is rendered, we get an input out. The value of the input is going to be set equal to this.state.text. So let's look at something really interesting here. I'm going to save this and we'll flip over to our browser. Now answer me the question, every time that you've seen an input on an HTML form, what are you always able to do? You're always able to click inside of it, enter some text, and immediately see that pop up, right? Well, here's a, here's a little bit of a surprise. Let's click inside the input, and then I don't know if you can hear it, but I'm just smashing on my keyboard over here, and absolutely nothing is happening. So what's happening? Well, when we define the value of the input and say that it's equal to this.state.text, that means it's equal to this.state.text, and it is not going to change unless the value of this.state.text changes as well. So you might ask yourself, well, you know, what the heck, how are we going to change the value of this.state.text? And the answer is by using an event handler. So we'll say whenever this input changes, run the handler this.handleInputChange. And then we'll add that event handler at the bottom. And let's not forget our comma, terrific. One thing that we haven't talked about a whole lot is our event handlers and the arguments that they get called with. Whenever one of our input handlers is called, the function is called with a argument that we get for free, and we usually just refer to it as event. Event is an object that describes the action that was just taken. So in the case of handle input change, 
we will get an event object that describes what just happened. And when I say describe, I mean it's gonna be, it's gonna give us a direct reference to the DOM element that was just changed or updated or clicked or what have you. We get a handle on that DOM element, in this case the input, by referring to event.target. So event.target means, hey, whatever this event just happened to, give me a DOM node reference to it. So target is that DOM node uh, reference, and in this case, it is our input. Every uh, input in our normal HTML JavaScript browser land has a property value, and that value property is whatever text is inside of the, um, the input at that given time. So what we're gonna do here is we'll just console log out event.target.value. I'm gonna save, and then we're going to start typing. Aha, there we go. So you can see that nothing is popping up inside of our input, but React does acknowledge that the user is trying to add some input in here. So we need to capitalize on this input somehow. We're gonna remove the console log, but still keep around the uh, target value. And what we wanna do here is update our state, update this.state.text. So we'll do our familiar this.setState, and whatever the value of the input is, I want that to be equal to text. If you're getting confused here, by the way, don't sweat it. We'll do a whole once over on the uh, way that this form is working here in just a minute. So now whenever a user changes the input, we'll read in that value and we'll set it to this.state.text. That will in turn update the value of the input. So let's go ahead and give this a try. I'm gonna save and we'll say something and hey, terrific, text actually shows up here. All right, so my goodness, what the heck is going on here, right? Why are we doing this in this crazy roundabout way? Why can't we just do this in a more jQuery-like style where we uh, read the value of the input off the DOM node directly and don't have to mess around with this, uh, with this state, this.state.text at all? Well, the answer to that is that it's a pattern that makes working with forms in React really, really straightforward. Whenever we set state on our component, it tri triggers a re-render of our component. So let's do something interesting here. Let's go ahead and we're just going to um, say in our bra in brackets this.state.text. Remember, anything inside of the curly braces will be evaluated as a JavaScript expression and then insert it into the DOM tree. So let's save this, come back over, and see what happens. So I'll start typing, and hey, look at that. The CSS looks a little bit funky, you know, it's editing the width, but we instantly get for free a kind of form of data binding here. So anytime that I enter data into my input, it's gonna show up on my HTML side as well. And that's happening because as we update this.state.text, we are triggering re-renders as well. Okay, so let's do uh, another once over on exactly what the flow is here, what the process is of working with this input. When the component first renders, this.state.text will be an empty string. We assign the value of this.state.text to be equal to the value of the input. That means that the input is only ever going to show the value this.state.text. When a user updates the value of the input, so they select the input and they type in some, some text, that triggers our change event this.handleInputChange. As the user starts typing in some information, we update the value of this.state.text with the value of whatever it is that they're typing into the input. Since our input shows the value of this.state.text, the value of the input will be updated as the user uh, updates or as the user types as well. 
Finally, and this is the part that's important to us, since we can very easily make a reference to this.state at any time inside of our component, whenever the user clicks the button, the add to do button, we can easily make a reference to this.state.text and we know a hundred, we're a hundred percent sure that the value of this.state.text is going to be equal to the value that the user has typed into this input right here. So we'll say console log this.state.text and we'll test this out really quick. I'll enter some text and we'll click add and sure enough there's the exact text that we're entering right here. So this has been kind of a confusing run through but basically the takeaway here is that we created a controlled form element by tying our state directly to the input. We do this even though it's a little bit brain bending to think about and it seems a little bit overly confusing we do this because it makes working with the value of the input super arbitrarily easy. Inside of any event handler, or really anywhere inside of our code for this component, we can make a reference to this.state.text and immediately have access to the value inside of the input. All right, so at long last, we now have uh, the value of the input inside of our component. So in the next section, let's push it off to Firebase.